Welcome to Boating Insights. This is a podcast about achieving your boating dreams, brought to you by Above and Beyond Boating. We deliver the leading courses to skipper your own boat. Hi there, welcome back to Boating Insights. My name is Neil Driscoll and for today's episode we're looking at some of the wider options that are available for using on a boat beyond the specific thing that you may have purchased or chartered for. So we're just going to look at some of the background on this. So the idea being, usually when you have someone or a couple of people have organised having access to a vessel, be it through ownership or via a charter or a holiday or that sort of thing, you usually find that they have particular things that they'll be really into that they particularly enjoy. It might be extended fishing trips, it might be exploring new destinations, or they're really keen on diving, or yacht racing, or whatever it might be. But the the critical point here is that the people who are doing the organising or owning and skippering will usually have things that they really enjoy on the water, which is what's prompted them to bring the whole thing together. Then, the bringing people with them. Now that might be for holidays, that might be for fishing trips or coming out for the day on the water, all that sort of thing. And one of the areas that I wanted to highlight today is that usually if you look at any boating setup, there's often about 10 key things that you'll do with a boat. And yeah, particularly if a boat set up for sailing or racing or fishing or diving, it's quite easy to get quite focused on that one specific thing as being the only thing the the boat is for. Um, That is hopefully a really enjoyable thing to use the boat for. But if you have a look and you ask people who are coming out on the water with you, what what are you really excited about? What do you want to come and do today? You'll often find that they're up for that thing, whatever it is in the previous list, but they'll also be really excited to do other things like go to a bay and go swimming or go snorkeling or hang out on the water or just be around friends and family. Or it might be that they're really excited to come and take part in a race that day or a regatta or a fishing competition. But it's interesting if you start talking to people or giving them some options about what you might do of a day, you'll often find that the the things that especially people that don't do a lot of boating are really excited about often involve being uh, moored or anchored somewhere and enjoying the ambience be it the nature the sunsets the wildlife the swimming snorkeling that kind of thing the tranquility more potentially than the going along, getting between different places and so on. Not always, obviously. All people are different and everyone's got their own things that they'll enjoy. But I've found that when you start probing into this, you'll you'll often find that there's a bit more of a selection than you might expect. Why this is an important or potentially important thing for you to look at if you're keen on having people come with you is just making that assumption. So, for, for example... Uh, a, a common one I come across a lot might be, let's say someone has a sailing boat, they have that sailing boat because they love sailing and they want to get out and they want to push the boat really hard and sail all the time. And that is potentially really fun for them. But you might find that not everyone you invite is really up for that. And and so that <laughs> might be, well, that's a sim- that simple. I just won't invite them again. And that's obviously your prerogative. Or it might be that if you do a bit of investigating, you you work out that actually maybe what could be done is that people could would are keen for a bit of a sale, but they maybe they're feeling a bit nervous. They've never they're worried they're going to get seasick, or they've never sailed before, and they're worried that they're going to be the only person not know what to do. And so sometimes if you can mix a, for example, take a simple thing like a day on the water up. You, you might find that if it was, say, take sailing for an example, uh, an option, you might be able to go somewhere where you motored up wind in calm water before, say, the afternoon breeze kicked in and get somewhere that you can enjoy being out and have a bit of a swim, have a bit of lunch, 
and then have an easy sail home. And it's things like that, if you kind of think about it and make it easy for people that can often just put them at ease, help them love the whole activity. And it, it might be over time that they also get really into the thing that you like doing the most. But you, you might well find that they are just feeling a bit nervous and apprehensive and that can help them feel really a lot more at ease and into the whole activity. A key thing here, it probably depends on who you're bringing out. So especially if you've got friends and family that aren't necessarily as into boating as you might be, and you're keen for them to spend some time with you, you want, you want to introduce them to this, then this is a, the, these are tips here that can be really helpful for you. Likewise, if, if your main passion is going out and doing fishing competitions and you've already got a whole crew of people that you go and do this with each weekend, this is probably not an issue. You know, you, you, you don't necessarily need to worry about it. But the, the reason I've sort of brought this up is one thing I find quite interesting if you talk to people where they're not the main boater in the family, but they go boating with other friends or family, it's always uh, an extreme response to how they feel about going out. It, it's very rarely like, oh, it's okay, uh, you know, sometimes I like it, whatever. It's pretty much always, I love going out on friend, uncle, parent, family, boat. We always go out and we do these things and really love it. And it, it often when they tell that story, it almost always does involve the kind of thing I'm talking about. Yeah, going, having lunch somewhere, anchoring up, maybe doing a bit of fishing or maybe a little bit of sailing or snorkeling. But it's usually a very day... She's usually fairly calm, usually uh, had a bit of time to just chill and enjoy the environment. And then the other way, often I'll find if people say, you know, my brother, dad, family, whatever, parents have got this boat and we don't really like going out on it very much. It's normally involves that it's like, oh, you know, we always get yelled at or they only go racing and they're never up for going out and just hanging out for the day or they only, you know, if we go, we have to go at 5 a.m. and we have to stay out fishing and we sit there anchored all day and we never see anything else. We're just rolling around in the sea or whatever it might be. And, and it's often the lack of variety and the lack of engagement and, and often feeling that they're kind of trapped in that scenario for the whole day that will make people a bit hesitant to come or go and 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 I suppose the key thing for you when you if you are sort of still with me here and you're digesting what what I'm bringing up today something to ask yourself is well, yeah how do I feel about that do I want to go on holiday with those people or do I want to invite them out for the day or am I up for having a go at doing a different day something I would encourage is if you do only ever do one kind of boating you may well find that if you try some other options on the water as well that that's really enjoyable for you or you might do it and say oh no that's not for me and and, and obviously all of the above is fine but it can be quite interesting to see when you give people some options like oh do you want to go here or there what they'll come up with and especially I find if you do you need to set up a day if you've got an option that you can get out like a paper chart or a boat map of an area that's just a bit easier to see than trying to crowd everyone around a tablet or a you know a chart plotter or something like that and you can say that the wind's likely to come from here in this afternoon or if there's any tide this is sort of what we're expecting so these are places we've got to be back before the tide comes in goes out or we you know ideally this is going to get a bit windier there this afternoon, so we're trying to avoid that. Just helps people understand what's going on. If you've got a bit of a visual overview of, of why we're making key decisions, I find that's really important. And then if you can, even if it's just a, do we do this or that? Or would you rather stay here longer or there longer? Or should we just, should we try and set up the whole day? Or should we just make a bit of a plan to, to get started and then we can review at lunchtime? just helps people feel like they're a bit more engaged in what's going on. And, and it's not always easy to please everyone. Sometimes you will find that, you know, you put that up to the vote and you, you almost regret it. Classic democracy, you end up, you know, give people four four options and four people, you get four different answers and then you still got to be the bad guy deciding which one you do. 
But it, it can be a really nice starting point to help people understand what what's going on with the boat, why we make certain decisions at certain times and, and how much time is feasible to be able to spend somewhere. I think especially if you're doing something like a boating holiday, that can be really important. Uh, yeah, if you, for example, hire a boat with some friends, you'll almost always find that everyone's got different things they're looking forward to. And so if you can find a way that you can have a bit of conversation first and find out what the things are that are priorities or things that people are keen to avoid or spend more time doing, less time doing, and having a bit of a check-in as, as you go through, say, a five, seven-day holiday, it, it makes it a lot easier to make sure that everyone feels like they're getting what they're looking from from it because it, it, sometimes managing that stuff can be tricky if you just go to the same resort or hire a house together but if everyone's got to live on board together and you want that to be fun it's really important that everyone feels like they've got a bit of a stake in how things are done so that's a couple of ideas for you today the, the key headline is number one just trying to remember that there's often sort of 10 different things that you might do with any boat be it fishing sailing diving reading hanging out having food chatting to friends taking in the tranquility snorkeling i mean the list is a lot more than 10 but generally speaking most people have kind of got 10 things that they might want to do that are feasible on on your boat including yourself being open to potentially having a bit of a chat with people to get a bit of feedback on their things that they're keen to do or keen to avoid and especially if you're doing a multi-day adventure if you can check in as the trip goes on that can often make it a lot more engaging for people and then just potentially be a bit open number one to saying maybe I'll try a couple of things that we don't do if I only do fishing racing for example or racing for example uh, normally maybe just see if you enjoy another day and if you don't then Fair enough, it might be that you do still enjoy spending time with family and if that's the only way to get them on the boat, then you do that even though it wouldn't be your first choice. Or likewise, you say, no, you know what, it's my boat, my rules, and I only want to do it my way. And all of the above is fine. It's just helping you think about what might work for you. And especially if you do have friends or family who have been a little bit hesitant or not as enthusiastic as you thought they might have been, to join you when you suggested that you were going to buy a boat, charter a boat, have a boat. These might be some options that you might find can just help get more of the people along for the ride that you were hoping would have been up for it that haven't seemed to give you as much enthusiasm as you were looking for. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy your time on the water. Bye.